First off, we have uh, Steve Shanley, who just uh, directed the North Corridor Jazz All-Stars in a uh, really neat set. Another band sounding really good. Thanks, Bob. Um, again, you've been doing this probably what? It's the fifth year. Fifth year. Yeah. They decided to put this, uh, give a little uh, representation to the northern part of the corridor after the City High and West High bands have been doing that. They did. West, yeah, West High and City High, and, and that had been such a good experience for the students in those programs. And I was just talking with Rich Met about this this morning, sort of the origins of, of that. And, and uh, Brett Messenger, who I think is on the Jazz Festival Committee, uh, he came up with the idea about six years ago that we've got some fine high school jazz musicians in the north part of the 380 corridor as well so why don't we get them in on the fun as well so uh, brett helped get that program off the ground and uh, i feel super lucky to make that a, a highlight of my summer each year and for ryan for ryan and and uh, rich they have two schools to pick from as far as players go you have all of Cedar Rapids, all of Marion, you have Waterloo and Cedar Falls, I think, yes. too, don't you? Yeah. And uh, surrounding schools. So you're, in, in you're some ways it's easier and in some ways <laughs> it's harder. Say, yeah, I would think it would uh, be a, you got a bigger pool, but, you know, you got to narrow it down to. Exactly. How do you do that? How do you pick kids out for this? Well, to be, to be perfectly blunt, the very first criteria, if any students from the 380 corridor are selected for one of the Iowa All-State Jazz Bands, either oh, okay. the 1A, 2A band, the 3A band, or the 4A band, if they're selected and they're and they are near the, the 380 corridor, I extend the, the offer to them first. That's great idea. And then any alternates. And then, uh, and then after that, just kind of talking to uh, talking to the area directors and uh, trying to do my best to get equal representation or representation from as many schools as possible. And it's not always possible to get all the schools uh, uh, represented when there's only 19 students in the band and so many schools mm -hmm. to choose from. And and uh, you know, kids' summer schedules are busy and and uh, <laughs> they're on vacation or doing camps and things like that. But it usually works out pretty well. And I think now that this has kind of become a thing, I, I'm noticing that a lot of the students kind of try and figure out a way to be around here oh, uh, this week so they can so they can take part in the that's, in the fun. That's great to hear. What what can you give me kind of the breakdown of the, where the students come from this year? You bet. We had some students from Waterloo West High School and Cedar Falls High School, and I just I want to give a shout out to to the, the directors at all of these programs again. So uh, we have uh, Kyle Englehart and Gerald Ramsey at Cedar Falls High School and Dan Kleinheinz and uh, Mike Conrad at Waterloo West. Mike is getting ready here to warm up the, the Colossus Band, which is going on next. And then uh, this year, participants from the Cedar Rapids area were Prairie High School students with uh, their directors, Craig Onney and Darren Jimerson. Uh, Washington High School, the directors, Joel Nagel and Jim Miller. Kennedy High School, the directors are Jared Wacker and Leslie Fleer. Marion High School, Chad Allard, and Linmar High School with Dan Terrell, Aaron Nuss, and Steve Stickney. So uh, as I told the crowd, it's like it's pretty easy for me. I just send out some some fun music that I want to get to play with the students, and then we showed up on Tuesday and rehearsed it, and uh, and they they sound so great. And, and one thing that I think is so cool about uh, a band like this is if you go to an average, you know, your Iowa, your average high school jazz band is going to be still one of the better high school jazz bands in the country. we got a long tradition of excellent jazz education here, and, and our, our programs are good. But even the very best of those, um, you're going to have maybe two, three, four students who really like to improvise and want to do it. And what's fun for me with a band like this is we had, I picked four or five tunes where we just opened it up for lots of soloists. And boy, the whole, pretty much the whole band, I think, if I, if I think back on this now, I think every person in the band did take a solo today. Um, <laughs> and, and, and a lot of them took, took uh, many Whether more Whether they wanted one. to or not. By right, you. yes. <laughs> so... Yeah, well, there, there was one in there. I, I kind of had a, a tune. It depended on how we were doing for time, and we didn't really practice it. It was a little Jeff Coffin uh, kind of New Orleans tune, and, uh, and we, didn't, we didn't really spend any rehearsal time on it. And I said, well, if, this is, uh, if we end up needing this, we'll just kind of wing it, and we'll see how it goes. And, <laughs> and, so, uh, and, I, and that's another thing. I kind of feel it's important for something like this for students to get experience of what it would be like on a real gig. And a lot of times you might be on a, on a gig, and all of a sudden the band leader says, oh, nope, we're going to do this one instead for whatever reason sure. you got to kind of pull it together in front of everyone and and uh you know i didn't really get that experience until 
uh, you know, until I was in college and after college. So I kind of try and make some real world pressure there. So that one I pulled out and just started pointing at people to solo. So <laughs> that one, that one was uh, was maybe not quite as polished, but but ended up being a lot of fun. So is it tough to pick out repertoire, not knowing the overall ability of all the students or you know you just pick out things that you think they might be familiar with or yeah I try and do a mix uh, I usually will talk to the directors of the participating schools and ask them if they have any music that they think might go together in one rehearsal and uh, that way some of the students already know it and uh, but after doing this a while and you know I know that if you made the the 4a all-state jazz band um, you're a good player. You're gonna be able. We're, we're gonna be able to play about anything, and uh, and there about half of that band made the made the 4A All State mm -hmm. Jazz Band or, or were alternates. So, as Dennis Green likes to say, that has to be their proximity to a jazz radio station. That's <laughs> right. why. Uh, that's why we have so much strong, so many strong students here. But they, uh, yeah. I uh, the the toughest thing is. Uh, really, it comes down to endurance because they, the brass players, they're smart. They can play about anything, but they don't have to play an hour and 20 minutes straight very often. So the toughest thing is picking music that I know when we play from beginning to end, the brass are still going to have some some chops. Right. Left. And uh, and this year we had two really fine lead trumpet players with uh, with uh, Ben Christensen from Linmar and Brenda Sevchek from uh, from Cedar Falls back there, so I was uh, I wasn't worried at all. I knew from rehearsal on Tuesday night. We rehearsed from four till nine on Tuesday with a little wow. break for pizza, and even at nine o'clock they were still playing fine. So oh, I, cool. I knew I knew we'd be good today. Yeah, do you do you miss your days uh, doing high school bands over at Washington? Or? I do, I do, and this is why I keep doing this every year because this kind of keeps me keeps me working with those high school students. I I love my students at Co. Love working with college students, but um, it's just a different, you know, little slightly different sense of humor, different energy level, um, and uh, and so yes, I do miss it, and this gives me a, a way to sort of keep my finger in it a little bit. You mentioned Co. How are things going over there? Which you're you've been there for. Five, six years. This will be my fifth year. Fifth at year, Co. okay. Yep, things are going great there. We've got, we had a, a fun, fun year jazz-wise this year with the uh, with the quartet of happiness uh, from from Boston came into play, right. and um, we got a, a up and coming trumpet player from Chicago named Marcus Carroll, who mm. I met this year. Uh, he was recommended. I also coordinate the Iowa Jazz Championships and hire the judges for that. And one of one of my judges had to back out, and I asked him if he had any rec recommendations, and he recommended Marcus Carroll, and I went and checked out his website and some of his playing. He's great. So we had him judge the festival. He did a great job, so we're going to have him at the co-festival next year. So I'm oh, looking forward to summit, introducing uh, uh, yeah, Jazz Summit oh, in, in February. So I'm looking forward to introducing Eastern Iowa to, to Marcus Carroll. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that'll be great. So uh, what, what's uh, you, it's the gold jazz ensemble, right? That you lead, or you lead all of them? There's one big band, one one big band, and uh, I think my uh, Bill Carson used to maybe call it the gold jazz band or gold ensemble. I think it still might say that on the folders. Okay, but maybe I just, that's where I, I, just, I, I just call I just call it the, the jazz band or jazz ensemble. So what, uh, what's what's the approach? How is it different from you mentioned a little bit f from approaching a high school band as opposed to you know, a college band, obviously the attitude is different and, you know, and those things change every year just like, you know, the high school band does. It's got to be somewhat difficult to figure out what you have and what you're going to be able to do. And Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's still pretty similar. Um, it, the differences really come down to they're just a little, uh, you know, they're a little older. They, uh, the, the thing I notice and even the, the, and I work with some of, and just did work with some of the smartest high school students you're going to find anywhere. But the fact of the matter is their brains are still only 16 or 17 years old. Sure. And so something about working with, you know, 20 year olds, I just find that I maybe have to tell them things fewer times or we have to practice things fewer times. <laughs> right. but, but really, I mean, it, it's a really small, small difference. The students I had at Washington were, you know, as bright as any college students I've ever had. And, and, uh, Probably a big a big difference between what we do at Co and what a lot of high schools do. We just probably play and read a lot more music throughout the year too. And then on a totally different scale, you are also the director of the Cedar Rapids Municipal Band for oh, thanks for reminding for me, however, Bob. Many, yeah. however many years you've been doing that, which you have a totally different set of players in that session. A lot of uh, a lot of older people, a lot of. I don't know if you have senior citizens working oh, in the band. We do. We sure do. We've got the band formed in 1951, 
And uh, that year, the, the founding director of the band, Roland Mailman, was a uh, high school band director in Cedar Rapids. And he was very into involving his students in this, in this band. He, involved, uh, he asked one of his students to join. Uh, his name is Larry Klima. And Larry is still in the band oh, playing right. clarinet. Yeah, he's, uh, he's 80 years old, and he also is in charge of our equipment. So we got Larry, and then we also have some, uh, some excellent high school and college players in the band, too. It's uh, basically if you audition at a, at a certain level and you earn the spot, you're in. It doesn't matter, matter what age you are. So we've got, and I'm, I'm so lucky with that band. I mean, they can read anything. And uh, we play a lot of tough music in there. A lot of the area symphony players who uh, use use that band as the sort of way to keep their chops in shape mm. for the summer. Yeah. And, and we have uh, we have a lot of fun. This week is is probably my favorite week, the Fourth of July week. We pick patriotic music and uh, and uh, and that's always always fun for the audience. So are you at Ellis? this Sunday or that's a good question we are at Ellis <laughs> yes and then uh, I think if I remember right you're at Jefferson next Wednesday Jefferson right? next Wednesday okay. and that'll be that'll be a, a whole new program and that will feature the lead alto player in the North Corridor band just now Lexi Forstrom she's a four-year oh. member of the of the North Corridor all-star band and uh, she won the municipal band young artist competition and next week on Wednesday and a week from this Sunday uh, Lexi is going to be playing with the band Ah. So we'll feature her because she won uh, won that competition. And I know you guys are in the process of uh, looking for a new uh, a band shell that that uh, to replace. We are. Am I allowed on on KCCK to beg for money for something other than KCCK? You can mention that you might I want some money, I, I, but <laughs> yeah. don't make a direct plea. <laughs> right. I think. I don't know. Yeah. No, De Dennis. I mean, if if uh, there has been no greater supporter for trying to get a new band shell than uh, than Dennis Green and KCCK. And uh, and for good reason. I, I think a lot of us agree that Jazz Under the Stars just wouldn't be the same if we didn't have at least a couple of those performances at Knoll Ridge sure. every year. And we need the portable band shell for that. And so uh, Jazz Under the Stars and the Municipal Band are the two primary users of the band shell. And uh, it is uh, it's pretty old. Started in 1959, mm -hmm. and uh, it has become. Uh, it is still safe, sure. but it's soon to not be safe. Yeah. And we're going to try and retire it before it becomes not safe, and get a new one, and get another. Uh, you know, 60 years out of that one, bringing music <laughs> to all the parks in Cedar Rapids. So, if you do want to help, you go to getonthebandwagon.org, or to the municipal band website, and uh, and there'll be a link there to to help out with uh, with raising some funds for that. Enough said. Thanks for uh, taking some time out and saw your pictures from Canada. Looks like you had a great time up in Canada. Yes, I was uh, very lucky. I took my first week off from the municipal band since I started conducting. Wow. And, uh, did they freak out? And, uh, did, they, did they do okay? You know, it, it, it's sweet. They all <laughs> they all tell me that they miss me, but I have a feeling maybe they were just fine having a week <laughs> off from me. Um, and uh, and I miss them, but it was good. Uh, I was telling them my kids are 9 years old and 11 years old, so they still, my daughter still thinks I'm cool, and, and that isn't going to last a lot longer. <laughs> so I'm, I decided we needed to do a couple of summer family vacation. Good idea. And, yep. So we went to went to Toronto, and I tell you what, to all you people listening out there who are big fans of jazz, Toronto is a great city for jazz. Just the week I was there, uh, Snarky Puppy was playing, Branford was playing, Oscar Peterson was playing. Mm. It's uh, it's very very supported there. So if you're looking for a, a, a trip abroad where you don't want to learn a new language or brave <laughs> any radically different cuisine, but you love the jazz, I think Toronto would be a great place to go. Montreal might be a different story. You might get some yes. nasty looks if you speak English up there. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Steve, thanks a lot for uh, stopping by and uh, bringing us up to date on your what you're go what's going on and. Uh, well, uh, you put together a great band this year. Thank you. Great. And, and again, th I don't know what we would do without KCCK in this part of the state with the Corridor Jazz Project and, and advocating the North Corridor Band and all that. It's uh, it's just a, it's a great relationship that the radio station and the students in the community all have with one another. Well, thanks, Steve. Thank you, Bob. Enjoy. Are you playing at all the rest of the uh, I with am playing the... with Jim Dreyer's group yes. at 5 o'clock. So you'll be up here. Uh, we'll, we'll be hearing you in a couple of hours again. You so. will, but I'll make Jim do that interview. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. We'll be hearing your piano work with Reet Mocano here in just a bit. Thanks, yep, Steve. Looking forward to it. Thanks.